everyone and welcome to our learning activity number 12 which is entitled Papa Nicolau Staining Method. A pap smear, also called the pap test, is a procedure to test for cervical cancer in women. A pap smear involves collecting cells from your cervix, the lower narrow end of your uterus, that's at the top of your vagina. Detecting cervical cancer early with a pap smear gives you a greater chance at the cure. A pap smear can also detect changes in your cervical cells that suggest cancer may develop in the future. Detecting these abnormal cells early with a pap smear is your first step in halting the possible development of cervical cancer. The learning objectives of this activity are the following. First is to identify the reagents used in Papa Nicolau staining method. Second is to appreciate the significance of the Papa Nicolau staining method in diagnostic cytology. And lastly, perform a supervised practice of the traditional and modified Papa Nicolau staining method. The materials needed for this activity are the following. You need frost-ended slides wire loops or cotton swabs, alcohol lumps, staining jars and dishes, staining racks and trays, cytocolor staining kit, ethanol at various concentrations, hematoxylin, EA65, OG6, 0.25% hydrochloric acid, silane sputum sample, and 1 liter of the beakers. Applications of Papa Nicolau staining or the PAP stain is basically used in the PAP smear or PAP test. It is used also for the screening of cervical cancer, examination of myeloma cancer, cells of the liver, and then screening for thyroid cancer, screening for cell carcinomas, examination and characterization of benign tumors, and identification of candida species, and lastly also for the identification of chlamydia trachomatis. Before we will proceed with an in-depth discussion about pap staining, let us first discuss about cytology. Cytology is a highly specific and accurate technique used to differentiate tumors from other inflammatory or degenerative diseases. The advantages of the method are the ease of obtaining material and the relative ease of processing it. So, these advantages make it suitable for screening purposes and have in fact led to a significant reduction in the incidence of cervical cancer. So why is a uh, pap smear is done? Screening is significant introduction of the incidence of diseases like cervical cancer. That's why a pap test or a pap smear is recommended every year for women over the age of 21 and slightly less frequently for women over 30. Now let us talk about pap smear or the pap test. The acceptance of gynecological cytology is a valuable discipline in cancer screening is principally due, due to the work of Gregorius Nicolau, Papa Nicolau or George Papa Nicolau from the years 1883 until 1962. He is also known as the father of modern cytology. He developed a test called the pap smear or pap test which is used worldwide for the detection and prevention of cervical cancer and other cytologic diseases of the female reproductive system. With this smear method and the multichromatic cytological staining technique that went with it, he was able to show vaginal and cervical cells in various stages of maturation. Later, the same technique was used to check malignancy in other specimen types. Papa Nicolau stain is a multichromatic staining histological technique developed by George Papa Nicolau, which is the father of cytology. So, pap staining is used to differentiate cells in smear preparations of various bodily secretions. Specimens can be gynecological smears or pap smears. It can also be sputum, brushings, washings, urine, cerebrospinal fluid, abdominal fluid, pleural fluid, synovial fluid, seminal fluid, fine needle aspiration material, tumor touch samples, or other materials containing cells. Pop staining is very reliable technique. 
As such, it is used for cervical cancer screening in gynecology. It is a standard gynecological procedure that examines your cervix for changes or abnormalities. It can also detect infections in human papillomavirus or also known as your HPV. If it is your first pap smear or gynecological exam, it's natural to be nervous. The test is slightly invasive but it is performed very quickly and is not painful. You will lie down on your back on an exam table and then you will place your feet on either side of the table in foot rests or cradles for your feet that will help you keep your legs legs uh, bent and wide open. Your doctor or nurse will put a tool called a speculum into your vagina. You may feel pressure upon the insertion of this uh, tool and will open it to see your cervix. Your doctor or nurse will use a special stick or soft brush in order to take a few cells from the surface of and inside your cervix and as well as your vagina. Your doctor or nurse will put the cells in a glass slide or in a small container and send them to a laboratory for testing. I have already mentioned this during the earlier part of my discussion. So these are the various uh, bodily secretions that can be used for the Papa Nicolau uh, smear or pap test. So the principle behind Papa Nicolau staining or pap stain is that the stain uses both basic and acidic dyes such that the basic dye stains acidic components of the cell while the acidic dye stains the basic components of the cells. This is based on the ionic char charges of the components of the cell with the principle of attraction and repulsion of the ions in the dyes. Now let us proceed to the classic forms of our pap stain. It involves five dyes in three solutions. First is a nuclear stain which is your hematoxylin and this is used to stain your cell nuclei. And then the first counter stain is our OG6 or the orange G is used to stain keratin. Its original role was to stain the small cells of keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma which is present in the sputum. And then the second counter stain is our EA or our eosin azure comprising of three dyes. It's our eosin Y, light green, SF yellowish, and our Bismarck brown Y. So the number of our uh, eosin azure, it denotes the proportion of the dyes. So like for example, you have your EA50 or eosin azure 50 and EA65 or eosin azure 65. Now we will discuss with our three dye solutions. So first is our hematoxylin. So hematoxylin was already discussed during our previous uh, learning activity number 10. So as a review, hematoxylin is a natural dye which stains the cell nuclear blue. So the dye attaches to the sulfate groups of the deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA because it has a high affinity for nuclear chromatins. The most common hematoxylin dyes used are Harris hematoxylin. Gill's hematoxylin is the commonest cytologically, although Gill's hematoxylin and hematoxylin S are used. So our hematoxylin, such as the unmordanted uh, hematin, is responsible for the yellow color imparted to the glycogen portion of the cell. we have our OG6 or our orange G counter stain. So the 6 there or the number 6 denotes the used concentration of our phosphotungstic acid. Other variants of our orange G are OG5 and OG8. So our OG6 counter stain is an acidic counter stain that stains the cytoplasm of the mature keratinized cells. So the components of the target stain or range in varying intensities of the dye.
And lastly, we have our EA or our Eosin Azure counter stain. So the EA stain contains two mutually incompatible chemicals, our Bismarck Brown and Phosphotungstic Acid which precipitate each other, so impairing the useful life of the mixture and compromising the differential staining of our Eosin and light green. So Eosin Azure is the second counter stain, which is a combination of Eosin Y, light green SF, and Bismarck Brown. So Eosin Y stains the cytoplasm of the mature squamous cells, the nucleoli, red blood cells, and cilia, into pink color so the eosin dyes commonly used are your ea31 and ea50 while ea65 also is used light green sf the function is that it stains the cytoplasm of the active cells such as columnar cells parabasal squamous cells and intermediate squamous cells into a blue color and our Bismarck brown why it stains nothing and sometimes it is often omitted now let us proceed to the composition of our eosin azure counter stain First is the eosin Y. The eosin Y, it stains the superficial epithelial squamous cells, nucleoli, cilia, and red blood cells as mentioned during the previous uh, discussion. And then light green SF yellowish stains the cytoplasm of all other cells. So this dye is now quite expensive and difficult to obtain. Therefore, some manufacturers are switching to fast green FCF. However, it produces visually different results and it is not considered satisfactory by some. And then the Bismarck Brown Y, it stains nothing and in contemporary formulations, it is often omitted as what I have mentioned uh, during the previous uh, discussion. When performed properly, the stained specimen should display hues from the entire spectrum uh, such as red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. The chromatin patterns are well visible. The cells from borderline lesions are easier to interpret. The photomicrographs are better and the stained cells are pretty. The staining results in very transparent cells, so even thicker specimens with overlapping cells can be interpreted. On a well-prepared specimens, the cell nuclei are crisp blue to black. Cells with high content of keratin are yellow, and glycogen stains yellow as well. Superficial cells are orange to pink in color and intermediate and parabasal cells are turquoise green to blue and while the metaplastic cells often stain both green and pink at once now there is a problem upon using our papa nicolau stain so the descriptions of the compositions of the staining solutions vary by source and they differ even in the Papa Nicolau's own publications. So the mixtures of the same name from different vendors therefore can differ in the composition, occasionally producing different or poor results. Pop stain is not fully standardized and it comes in several versions and modification. So sadly, differing in the exact dyes used, their ratios and timing of the process. So the limitations of our pop stain is that it is only a screening test that must be followed up with more specialized diagnostic tests. It has a low sensitivity with limited accuracy. And stain structures are relatively low in contrast and are extremely difficult to distinguish under the light microscope. So the images created using the staining solutions help the authorized and qualified investigator to better define the form and structure in such cases. So further examinations may be necessary to reach a definitive diagnosis. Now let us proceed.
proceed to the various methods used for Papa Nicolau stain. First is the cytochlor method. Cytochlor, it is a staining kit by Merck Millipore International, capable of producing stains within 3 minutes. These stains provide complete information on the dignity and additional information on the hormone status and vaginal flora in the gynecological smears. The difference between these and the classical Papa Nicolau stains is that the cytochlor requires no orange stain. Both mature and keratinized cells appear pink instead of orange. The kit follows your Japanese modification of the classical pop stain. So the principle behind our cytochlor method is that the cytological standard staining according to Japanic is intended for the staining of our exfoliative cells in cytological specimens. This cytochlor quick staining kit contains modified hematoxylin and polychromatic solutions. Consequently, a cytological sample can be stained in about 3 minutes. So first, the cell nuclei are stained with a hematoxylin solution. The polychromatic solution, Eosin Azure 31, contained in the kit is a so-called polychromatic mixture of Eosin, light green SF, and Visuvin or our Bismarck Brown, and it serves to enhance the staining reaction in the cytoplasm. Due to their different molecular weights, in relation to the different pore sizes of the cell membrane, eosin and light green SF enables a differentiated staining of the structure in the virus cycle stages of the cells. Now we also have our Japanese modification of classical pop stain. So Japanese standard cytological stain with modified solutions is chiefly used for early recognition of the female genital carcinoma. With cytochlor, in about 3 minutes, a stained microscopic specimen can be obtained giving reliable results on malignancy. Hormone status and vaginal flora. The difference between these and classical Papa Nicolau stains is that cytochlor requires the orange stain. Both mature and keratinized cells appear pink instead of orange. So the cytochlor can also be used to stain smears prepared from tumors. It punctuates and excised specimens. And the sediment or centrifugate obtained from body fluids, it is in... IVD registered kit that is CE certified thus it can be used for clinical diagnostic purposes and then the package is sufficient for up to 1000 applications so that is the advantage of using your Japanese modification of our classical pop stain now let us proceed on how to perform the traditional or the classic Papa Nicolau staining method. So using your wire loop or a sterile cotton swab, you can make a sputum smear at the middle of a clean glass slide and then make sure that you avoid smears that are too thick. So you have to allow the edges of the smear to dry before fixation. So first things first, fix smears in a 95% concentration of our alcohol, such as your ethanol, for 10 minutes of fixation. And then you must immerse or dip the slides into the following reagents. First is you're gonna dip it into a 95% ethyl alcohol for 15 seconds. And then next is our 70% ethyl alcohol for 15 seconds. And then next is our 50% ethyl alcohol for 15 seconds. And then next is you have to wash it with a distilled water for 15 seconds. And then next is you have to flood it or apply it or dip it into your Harris hematoxylin for 6 minutes. Then wash it again with distilled water for at least 10 dips. And then next is you have to dip it in a hydrochloric acid 0.5% solution for 1 to 2 quick dips. Then wash it again with distilled water for 15 seconds. And then next is you are gonna 
dip it into an ammonium hydroxide in which the smear turns into blue or this is the so-called the process of bluing and then next is that you're gonna dip your slide into an increasing uh, concentrations of alcohol 50%, 70%, 95% for 15 seconds each and then after that you're gonna dip it into our counter stain which is the OG6 for 2 minutes and then you have to dip it again into our 95% ethyl alcohol for 10 dips at least 2 times and then next is you're gonna dip it in our Eosin Azure 65 for at least 3 minutes and then 95% ethyl alcohol 10 dips and then the absolute ethyl alcohol for 10 dips and lastly into our silane for at least 10 dips and don't forget everyone that in order to preserve your slides you must mount it with a resinous mounting media and then you can cover it using a glass slip now let us proceed on how to perform your cytocolor method so first is that you have to fill the staining jars and dishes with the reagents and arrange them according to the procedure below. You have to fix the smears with Mercofix or in a 95% ethanol, at least 10 dips, and then proceed to the staining proper. First, you must dip it in a distilled water for at least 10 dips. Next is into the hematoxylin stain for at least 1 minute. And then you must rinse it under running water for 5 seconds. And then next is you're gonna dip it into 2 propanol at least 2 dips. Next is to apply the polychromic solution for 1 minute. And then next is the 80% 2 propanol for at least 5 dips. And then next is 2 propanol for 5 dips. You must perform this at least 2 times. And lastly, our silane for 5 dips. And you must perform this again for at least 2 times. And then after performing that, don't forget to mount your slides immediately after staining. So this picture shows the setup of our traditional or our classic uh, staining, pop staining method. As for our reference, it is flashed on the screen. Thank you so much everyone for listening to this uh, video and I hope that you have learned something for this learning activity. See you and have a good day everyone. God bless you all.